All right. Um, so we are setting up our beacons. We now have them disappearing. So we can't uh, uh, see them there. It's actually interesting. Why is it? Uh... Oh, <laughs> so we're uh, kind of an interesting, let's call it somewhat bug right now. We're about halfway down the uh, through our well, not halfway, but we're several verses into our conversation and we haven't even moved up to the things yet. Our animals are hitting our trigger for uh um yeah the animals are hitting the trigger for our uh, uh conversation yeah so what we need to do is we need to make sure that we are tagged as player wait how are they hitting at t because t is with the who? No, 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 no. The, the, to start, to start it, that also moves it ahead one every single time. So you could press T to move it ahead if you're standing there, but you could also move away, then move back, and that'll also advance it because the, we have a trigger that starts the encounter. Oh, okay. um, yeah, that's the that's this box collider around the uh, the firewood. Um, so here's Mary. Could you change that to have it just start the conversation? Well, yeah, probably. So let's fix that right now. So we're going to go ahead and actually tag Mary as player. And then what we're going to do is for the three firewood. <clears throat> firewood. Oh, Gabriel trigger. Okay, yeah, so right here on trigger enter, we're summoning Gabriel. And when we summon Gabriel, that also starts the conversation because Gabriel then, um, go back here. When Gabriel gets summoned, he then says, start the dialogue to the scene controller. And the scene controller start dialogue. So call show next comment. Uh, where is the? Yeah, it starts the dialogue here and then shows next comment. Uh, so that's how it keeps advancing it. So why don't we go ahead and we will just put a little boolean in here so we can only start it once. That's what you're suggesting, right? Mm -hmm. So we'll do a private bool um dialogue started equals false and then inside of our trigger here we'll ask who collided with this because we're specifically interested in when the player collides not one of these random chickens right <laughs> so we'll ask the question if other that is the dude who collided dot game object dot tag if that guy is equal to player and this dot dialog started and not this dot dialog started so and the dialog has not started yet then we'll go ahead and send the message to Gabriel both of those conditions need to be true. The player bumped into it, and we haven't already started the dialogue. After we summon Gabriel, we'll say this dot dialogue started is equal to true. Make sense? So this will make it so that we can only trigger the dialogue once. And it can only be triggered by us, not the chickens. All right, so hasn't started yet. We just started it. I'm backing up, running back in. Yeah, it's not advancing anymore. So it looks like we're in pretty good shape now. Okay, 
So now let's get a um, uh, a goat, the white goat, moving towards one of the beacons. So in our scene controller, uh, we already hooked up the beacon things, right? Yep. Uh, we we also need to let the scene controller know about the the goat. We'll call this the uh, the wandering goat. Public game object. Wandering goat. Sounds like the name of a beer. Doesn't it? It does kind of. Yeah. I wonder if it is. All right. Wandering goat. And then we're going to have a function in here. It's like coffee. Oh, is it? It's a coffee company. Um, uh, private void set goat next beacon and for right now we're just going to set it to uh, and actually uh, I need to do something uh, well this will be okay we can do it this way so we're gonna set the goat so this dot wandering goat dot set mm, this dot wandering goat dot get component this is the nav uh, it's nav mesh agents we need to import AI here using unity engine dot AI and we're going to get the nav mesh agent aspect of our uh, goat and we're going to set his destination and his destination needs to be um, another nav mesh agents location so we're going to just right now we're just going to set it to beacon one all right so this dot b1 dot transform dot position All right, but this is going to be on the nav mesh. So we need to make sure that we mark certain things in the area as not being walkable, um, that kind of stuff. Now, we're not going to mark the animals, the, the smaller animals as not being walkable. Um, we will probably have all of those be nav mesh. Oh, I have to think about that. We want to be a little careful. If we have too many of the small animals not being walkable, then what we'll end up having is the goat will look real unnatural as it's trying to weave around these little chickens. Where really in real life we kind of just expect the chickens to just get out of the goat's way, something something like that. So we'll kind of just let them wander. So we'll mark just the big stuff as being not walkable. All right, so that's going to be set goat next beacon, uh, and now what I'm going to do up here in start. Let's make the goat initially walk to target. So we'll say this dot set goat next beacon. Now, one thing I'm going to do for that goat is I'm going to disable the wandering script for him that came with him. So he won't wander. He's going to do our wandering, our version of wandering. So we'll come back into here. And here's our white goat. I'm going to call this the wandering goat, just so we remember that. And I'm going to turn off his wander script so he no longer wanders. 
Okay. Um, but now he is a nav mesh agent. Other things that are going to be nav mesh agents here are going to be our uh, firewood, our house. Um, so those guys all need to be, I need to open up the navigation window. Okay, only do one at a time. Oh, I actually need to do this sub elements here. So for our three firewoods, I need to grab the sub elements. And I can make those navigation static, not walkable. For the house, I have to grab all the individual pieces of the house. I can make those navigation static wall with columns. Yeah, because they're actually going to be part of those houses that are walkable. We can't get through the walls. So let's let's just uh, assume the houses are not walkable in their entirety. Navigation static, not walkable. Navigation static, not walkable. Okay. Then we have our plane, that's our floor, right? We're gonna make that guy navigation static, but walkable. So what we've done in the scene right now is we've set all the houses up as being places we can't walk. We've set the pile of wood up as a place we can't walk. We've set the ground up as a place we can walk. So now I'm gonna come over here to bake and we're gonna bake that nav mesh. Okay, so notice it gives us a little circle here around where the wood was. It gives us uh, cutouts for the houses. So any place that isn't those things, we can walk. All right, so that creates a nav mesh. Now we have agents that walk on nav meshes. And anything as a nav mesh agent can set its destination to something else that's a nav mesh agent. So we're having our, our wandering goat be a nav mesh agent. And initially, we're going to set him to walk to the first beacon. All right. Now, right now, the first beacon is this guy up here and the goats right here. So there's no real obstacles in between. Let's just get him walking there first and then we'll move the goat to a different place on the scene and we'll see him path over there. All right. Then we want to make the problem of him choosing a new target after he hits a destination. OK. So we got that is good. Let me close these houses. Wandering goat is a nav mesh agent. Good. And then I need to go to my beacons. I need these beacons to all be nav mesh agents. Okay. So beacons are nav mesh agents, even though they're not going to move. And uh, um, then our goat is also a nav mesh agent. And agents live on top of nav meshes, which we just baked. Right? So then what do we do in our script? When our script first uh, starts, we go ahead and we make all of our beacons invisible so we can't see them. Then we go ahead and we... Uh, set the goat's next beacon, which is just this function down here, which sets the wandering goat's nav mesh agent, so his component that is a nav mesh agent's destination to be the first beacon's position. Let's go ahead and run this, and we should see the goat go nowhere. Uh, unassigned reference of the 
Oh, we never actually drug the goat over to the script. So here's my scene controller. He wants to know about the goat. We never told him about the goat. So here's our wandering goat. Now let's run it. All right, there he goes. He's walking over there. Well, he's not really walking. He's more gliding. All right, because he doesn't have a... Uh, um, yeah, he doesn't have an animation associated with him right now because we didn't use the default script. Well, we'll put that in. But for right now, let's get him now. So he, he arrived at one beacon, right? So now what we need to do is we need the beacon to become aware when the goat, when, they, when something with tag animal hits them. Okay. So I'm going to create a new script here. And we're going to call this guy Beacon Listener. Has Listener got one in? Got, does it got one in? It's one in in Listener, right? Mm. Beacon Listener. Okay. And our Beacon Listener is... Um, this on collision enter so this is actually a function i just learned about uh, earlier this week from one of the uh, students in the game programming class so up to this point we've set some things up with triggers right so when we have a trigger if i say a box collider uh, is a trigger then we can have a function that we write that is on trigger enter associated with the box collider for this guy but if I just generate, if I want my box colliders or anything to just work the way they normally would work, but I still want to be notified whenever everybody bumps into this. No, I still want it to be physics. I still want it to just react the way it would normally react. But I want to be aware when somebody bumps into this, I can look at on collision enter, which allows me to programmatically do something and also respond to physics naturally. Now, the reality here is, is that we probably want it to be a trigger um, because our beacons are invisible anyways. We don't need natural physics to associate. We just need to know when the when the goat has arrived at its destination. When the goat reaches a beacon, we then want to become aware of that so we can send them to a new, a, a new beacon. Right. All right. So we'll use the on trigger enter here for this guy. I'm just going to leave that code in there for a second and let's go back and add this to our beacons. But we also need to add uh, capsule colliders to our beacons because I made them the shape of a capsule. All right, so here's my four beacons. I'm going to give all these guys the beacon listener. So you can highlight multiple game objects at once and give them all the same component. All right, he already has a capsule collider, and I'll go ahead and make their capsule colliders triggers. This will make them call that function. Make sense? So whenever something collides with the uh, beacons, because it's the collider as a trigger, it will call this function in here on trigger enter, and we're going to ask the question. We're only really interested in things of type with a tag animal because that's what we added to our our goat right perhaps that wasn't the best tag but we could have called it the wanderer or something like that but at this point only one thing has the animal tag on it and it's the uh goat so we're going to look for an animal so we're going to say if other dot game object dot tag if that's equal to animal Right, if that's equal to animal, then what are we going to do? Well, that means that the goat has arrived at a destination. Who knows how to send them to the next destination? That is our scene controller. And our scene controller has a function called set goat next beacon. So I'm going to copy the name of that function here. Now, what we did, if you remember this trick from last time, is we created a singleton situation here where the scene controller has a static object that is the instance of the scene controller.
which we set right here. Okay, so we can get that instance and then send that guy a message. The message we're going to send him is the function we want him to call. So we'll come back into our listener guy here. So we'll say scene controller dot the instance dot send message. What message? That message. So when one beacon determines that the uh, um, uh, that the scene manager is uh, well, that one beacon determines that the goat has come there. He'll then scream to the scene manager, "Hey, I need you to send this goat to another place." Make sense? So we'll go back to our scene controller. And I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to create a private game object array. Called the beacons. And this guy will equal B1, B2, B3, B4. What's the syntax for this? So that. I can't give it a. Uh, I want to be an array literal. It must not like me doing it inside of the, so I can steal this. And then what I'll, oops. This dot the beacons is equal to that. Is the syntax this in C sharp? Let's look it up. C sharp array literal. Okay. okay, so it's new array and then these guys. Like that. Okay. Uh, and then I'm also going to keep track of the current pause. So we'll just rotate through the places for right now. So we'll have private um, int cur beacon. We'll start off at zero. And then for going to the next one, we're going to set the destination to this dot the beacons at bucket this dot 
Kerr Beacon. So that'll be the game object we go to. This dot the beacons is an array of game objects, right? Okay. And Kerr Beacon is an integer. So what problem does this guy have? Oh, it doesn't like me using this. Oh, screw that. All right. So, <laughs> so set destination to uh, um, this dot the beacons at bucket this dot current beacon. Then we need to update curve beacon for the next time through. So we'll say this dot curve beacon is equal to. This dot cur beacon plus plus actually we'll do plus plus before it. So plus plus this dot cur beacon mod this dot the beacons dot length. That way it'll wrap back around. So our curve beacon will be equal to itself plus one. Actually, we don't need to do plus plus there. We'll just do plus one. Itself plus one mod the length of our the total number of beacons we have. Oh, the reason it doesn't like this is because this guy's a game object. I need to give it its transform position. Now it's happy. Okay. So every single time set go next beacon gets called, what are we going to do with this guy? We're going to go ahead and set the wandering goats nav mesh agent's destination equal to a new transform position. And it's going to be our next beacon in a row. So we'll go from beacon one to beacon two to beacon three to beacon four, so on and so forth. All right, so we initially call this guy from our start here inside of our C manager. But then he also gets called from within our beacon listeners that are attached to our beacons. So when the trigger is entered on our beacons, if it was an animal, so it was that goat, We'll go ahead and send the message to our scene controllers instance to set goat, uh, goat next beacon, which should get it going to the next location. Go ahead and run that. Is he getting, is he stuck on it? print going to new destination all right so let's make sure that we're getting into this uh, function from the send messages all right so there's the first one
Okay, so it only got there once. So it's not actually hitting the trigger on our beacons. Does that mean that a beacon that has its nav mesh off? Oh, I'm sorry, a beacon that has its render off also has its collider off? That might be a true statement. Let's find out. So I'm, for this example, I'm going to not hide my beacons. So we'll still see them there, but if it works this time, then that means that when you turn off a render, it also turns off the corresponding box collider. All right, still we got called once. So let's look at our wandering goat. He is an animal. Let's make sure we're hitting the trigger. So hit trigger. Found animal. So we'll see we'll see hit trigger, then we'll see found animal if we get inside of this if statement. So if the thing we collided with was an animal, then we call our set goat next beacon. Let's see if we're getting there. Okay, it is not hitting the trigger. It looks like it. Well, he's physically bumping into it, but it's not picking the trigger. So let's look at uh, the capsule. Oh, you know what? It could be the collider associated with that goat um, or the lack thereof in the event. Yeah, so we, there's a character controller. Yeah, he doesn't have a box collider, so we probably need to uh, put a box collider on our goat. All right, so here's our goat, and here's his box collider. And we'll go ahead and stretch that out in front of him a little bit. All right, and then we need to lift it up. Ooh. <laughs> Gabriel's feet are just... <laughs> All right, so now he should be able to bump into that. Let's make sure that's the case, and then we can hide it again. He didn't hit either.
I don't think it needs to be a trigger. So this Wandering Goats Box Collider should be interacting. This is Beacon 1, Beacon 1's Capsule Collider. But they're not hitting. Here, I'll, I'll give it some more lead room. It looks like it should hit pretty easily. All right. Here is our beacon listener that has an on trigger enter. But that trigger is never getting called. I don't think it needs to be a rigid body. Let's try to add, your, add a rigid body to the goat. We'll turn off gravity. Okay, it did collide with it being a rigid body. But he needed to be a rigid body with a collider. Colliders should be able to hit each other. It should not have to be a rigid body. How is this guy not hitting? He 
mesh colliders work with non-rigid bodies. So does that mean that this guy has to be a rigid body? Yeah, that was it. Okay. Interesting. So it sounds like I have a misunderstanding with colliders and how they react with rigid bodies. So we have this thing called a mesh collider that we haven't seen on anything yet, but mesh colliders only work when we're having things that are not rigid bodies colliding. It looks like if we want a capsule collider to work for a trigger, the cap, the thing with the capsule collider has to be a rigid body itself. So it's like, you know, we're bumping into this table. Um, but the wandering goat then would need to have a collider on him, but does not need to have a uh, rigid body. So colliders can collide with other colliders that have rigid bodies um, unless it's a mesh collider. So now I need to make B2, 3, and 4 have rigid bodies as well. And now they should all work for bouncing back and forth. All right, so now he's just working his way through our uh, through our beacons, um, but we probably want to make him uh, make him walk. So let's go and hide the beacons again and make sure that it uh, continues to work. And it should. I think we saw that the uh, turning the render off. did not have an impact on the uh... okay so let's get him walking now but we want him walking only when he's uh, moving between places so let's get an animator on this dude so here is our wandering goat Now, does he already have an animator? Is it all done programmatically? Let's go look at the assets for this guy. This is the farm animals, animations. Um, Okay, that's not for that one. Uh, let's see how their wandering script works. All right, so it says that the animals have animations attached to them, it looks like. So is this, yeah, here it is. So the goat itself 
has an idle sit animation. All right, so how did it make the walk go? So it plays the idle animation by default. Okay, so it has a controller associated with it. We saw that controller, and it has uh, something called Simple Move. So is that the guy we saw in here? Mm, does not look like that guy. So where did controller come from? Ah, it's the character controller. So that character controller is a uh, well, it's a character controller object. So we need to give ourselves access to the character controller. So we'll create a private variable here. Private character controller goat controller. So for those of you who are going to use the uh, farm pack that we just got, you might want to pay special attention to this because I'm showing you how to use the animations. All right. So built into those guys, the way they actually do animations is through something called a character controller. So I'm creating a variable for this character controller type here. I'm going to name it goat controller. In start here, I'll go ahead and extract that. So I'll say this dot goat controller is equal to this dot wandering goat get component character controller. So that'll grab the character controller from our goat. So we have access to that guy. And then when we want to play something, we use that character controller to actually play a um, I think it's called simple move. Yeah. So transferred forward at a speed. Oh, that's going to be interesting. Because one issue we're going to have is the thing is actually their character controller actually makes the dude move. Well, our character, our dude is actually moving as part of the nav mesh agent. So let's see if we can tell him to do his simple move with a speed of zero. Let's see if that. Uh... Okay, so we have something called move. We have something called simple move. Uh, let's just look at. So let's do this dot go controller dot. 
Simple move. Moves the character with speed. Vector three dot forward. So let's just look at that and see if he's moving. We might need to put it inside a fixed update. But hopefully, I'm hoping this like gets him moving and keeps him moving, maybe slowly, but um, I'm not talking about him moving across the screen. That's already working. This is talking more about the animation aspect of him. I want to see his legs kicking. All right, so let's put it inside of fixed update. So we'll have fixed update and we'll go ahead and tell the character to move inside of fixed update. Let's see if we just see him moving at that. Otherwise, we'll put a, a speed on him. Give him a speed of 30. Okay, so now the movements are fighting each other. It's kind of... It's kind of crappy for this model, maybe. Okay, so new decision. Okay, well, so this is, I guess, interesting enough. So we're doing our movement uh, from these different beacons by uh, putting... Well, by using the artificial intelligence engine built into Unity. What they're using is something called ray casting. So what they're doing is like kind of coming out of the front of the animal is like a laser beam. Okay. <laughs> so think of it like your autonomous cars or something. And so if something's in its way, so it creates a, uh, um, a distance between, so it has its max, max distance when it can turn, it creates a ray cast point and ray casts it's like shine the flashlight out in front of you. And if that light hits something within a certain distance of you, then there's something in your way. And then you have to make uh, maneuvers to get around it. Um, so here is, uh, um, make sure the animal does not walk too far or out of max distance. Uh, this faces new directions, so this has him rot rotate. And the simple move guy here has him move forward at a speed. But what's happening is, is that because we're using the controller, the controller's raycast is sending him off the... So watch what happens here. If I get him going... He's avoiding stuff that we were coming at 
because he has his own built-in avoidance system from his character movement. I wonder if I can... Let's look at the Wandering Goat. Here's the character controller. Yeah, he has an animation called Walk. Feel like if we can extract that. Here's the goat. Okay, so he has an, so this goat has an animation that we can play. So I think we can grab this walk animation. All right, so that is in here. Here is walk. Okay, we can build our own controller for this. So it gets a little bit complicated with this guy, but we're okay with the way our animations are going to work. So we'll do this the way we've done our animations before. So I'm going to go into my goat, and I'm actually going to turn off his character controller. Um, but now what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Uh, Go into my scene one, go into animations. I'm going to create a new animation controller. And we'll call this guy the goat controller. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and open up this animator so I have it here. Then I'm going to go and I'm going to add the... Uh, um, the, cup, the couple of different animations that we want this goat to do. So for those of you who are going to use this farm animal thing, if you go into farm animals, then you go into meshes, then you go into animals, then you click on the goat, the little arrow next to it, it has the different uh, um, things in it. So we have uh, a couple of different idols. Does it show us what it looks like? Okay, so that just turns his head a little bit. What does this idol do? Well, he looks alive. Um, so here, I'm just going to drag just one of the idols out there. And then I'm also going to drag the walk out there. Okay, so I made my own animation controller for this dude. Uh, and we'll, we'll take a break here in a minute. Let's just get the animation thing going. So when we first enter for this guy, he'll be idle. We're going to add a couple of triggers. So we'll add a trigger for is walking. Actually, it's called should walk.
And then let's add another trigger for should idle. Okay, so when we first come in, we'll be idle. We'll create a transition from idle to walk. On this transition, we're gonna add a condition for should walk. Then we'll add another transition from walk back to idle. On that transition, the condition is going to be should idle. Okay, so we can move from idle to walk by setting the trigger for should walk. Uh, we can move from walk to idle by setting the trigger for should idle. Now let's go and actually, well, we need to add this controller to our goat. So here's our wandering goat. Go back to the scene here. All right, so there's our wandering goat. I'm gonna disable the character controller that's on him. I'll disable the wander script. Um, we'll leave the box collider on. We'll leave the nav mesh agent on, but I'm gonna go ahead and drag. Oh, hold on. I need to create, add a component for an animator to him first. He's gonna have an animator, and that animator requires a controller. So here's my controller. Okay, so now by default, let me go into the script and undo some of the crap I did in here. So now we have our animator goat controller that we'll have access to. I'm gonna grab the animator from the goat to set that. We'll move it out of fixed update. And now what we do is when we're going to our new destination, we'll go ahead and set his animation. So we'll say this dot go controller dot set trigger should walk. So when he first comes in, in fact, right now, I'm going to comment that out just for a second. So when we first come in, he should be standing there idle, and we'll see him moving, and he'll be idly kind of wiggling while he's moving. Then we'll actually set him walking. So here's our goat. He has an animator. We left the character controller and the wandering script on him, but just disabled it. So it's not actually playing those things. We've replaced that with our own animator that we made right here that has these couple of um, idle and uh, walk animations. I can't tell if he's moved or not. So let's set the walking. So we're gonna set his should walk. Why aren't you walking? Let me keep him from moving for a second. Let's see if he just starts off idle.
He is not. Is it because the this goat has an animation thing on it that I assume was being used by the animation controller or the, the uh, character controller. We have an animator that has our controller in it. See, their wander script is using that goat transform that has the animation. And then from the animation, it's playing the animation. Let me see something here. Okay, so we can use their prefab. to I think play one of the animations. Rather than using our own controller, because it's part of their prefab. So if I say public. Well, let's do this. Let's let's take 10 minutes. I'm pretty sure this will work. We're going to use their specific animation. So uh, uh, and that should make our goat move. This will work for all the animals.